I'm Nina. And I'm Sinead. And today we're cracking the case open on Broken Blades. adventure is over we had such a blast but now we're back into the office so we thought for our first video up uh, now that we're back into it in our showroom we might talk about a bit of a controversial subject Ooh, we're throwing ourselves in the deep end and we're talking about a taboo subject broken blades I know now we want to sort of get out first up silky saws are the best hand and folding saws fixed and folding saws in the world we love them they're absolutely amazing but yes we are talking about how you can break a blade because it is possible yes and it's not we're saying the best in the world because it's our opinion because we sell them we say mm -hmm. that because we use them and we love them and they're absolutely amazing yeah but um i'm going to pretend to be a customer and i'm going to ask you either a few little tricky questions mm -hmm. uh, we have been asked a couple of times before so the first question is nita can you break a tooth off a silky blade yes can you bend a silky blade? Yes. Can you split a silky blade? Yes. Can you lose a silky blade? Yeah, I, I'm sorry guys, you can, but that's something we can't help you with today. That's kind of a soul searching one. The rest we can help explain. <laughs> <laughs> but if they're so amazing, then why do they break? Good question. So I think first up, there were a few different questions you had there, broken teeth, bend, yes. all these sorts of things. So let's just talk about the blades first up. I think that will be the easiest. Yes. Now, um, I think when we try and figure out why a blade breaks, and particularly in such a high quality tool like a Silky, a lot of people think if I buy the best of something, that it means it's indestructible, it's never gonna break. Well, that's not really true. You go and buy yourself a beautiful kitchen knife that could cost anywhere from $100 to $500, you drop it on your concrete floor and that thing will snap. So it's not that there's a quality issue when it comes to a part of a tool breaking, it's, you've got to look at what that tool was designed for, how it's been made, and then how that could potentially break. So that's what we want to crack open today, is how these things could break so that you don't put them in a situation where they will, or you don't choose a product that will. So, yes. if we're talking blades and we're, say, the engineer, and we want to make a blade that's not going to break. Oh, I'm really struggling with that blade and break thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you want to make one, the, the easiest way to make a blade that's not going to break is to make it really, really thick. So if you make a really thick blade, as in the curve, um, then that's going to be very strong and be very hard to bend and break. Now, the downside of doing that, though, would mean that when you cut with it, you're cutting really wide bits of wood out of the branch you're cutting, and it's going to be very heavy, and it's going to be you know, heavy to carry, heavy to use, and it's not going to be energy efficient or time efficient. Now, Silky do actually make a couple of hand saws that have these thicker blades, but you'll find the majority of them are quite a thin blade. Yes, it is. Mm. But they're still incredible to use, even with a thicker blade. Yeah. But when we talk about thin blades, we're not talking about um, from the tooth to the back of the blade. Yes. We're talking about from width, um, width of the blade, so from mm. side to side of the blade. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Um, so, with, with the thickness in mind, so as we said, Silky make a couple of saws with very thick blades, but the majority of them are thin blades. So, why do they do that? Well. The thinner the blade is, the less wood you're cutting out. So when you only cut a very thin amount of timber out of your branch, it's a very fast, easy feeling cut. Now Silky do all kinds of things as well as the thickness of their blade to make their blades cut amazingly fast and easily and all those sorts of things. But we're not going to get into that today, we're just talking about how you can break them. So because the majority of them are quite thin to give you that quick, easy, smooth cut, um, you've got to be very careful with how you use it. Now, a lot of people out there are used to using like a cross-cut saw or a bow saw or, um, you know, like those carpentry saws and all of those, you put a lot of forward pressure on the saw. The other thing you have to do with those is put a lot of pressure um, downward. So I'm just going to grab one of our saws here. So this is the Presenti. Ouch. I just put cream on my hands. Don't do that when you're trying to pull saws out of <laughs> So um, this is the presenti. So a lot of people will push very hard down with the saw while they're cutting because yes. on a lot of those sorts of saws you have to put a lot of 
forward fours to make the saw actually work. Silkies design their saws particularly uh, to try and minimize the chances of breaking and also efficiency with using it because in a lot of situations whether you're using it for work or bushcraft or survival, energy uh, conservation is huge. So yes. silky saws cut on the pull stroke. So not when you push it, it's when you're pulling that saw towards you, they do the cutting. And it's incredibly difficult to break a blade by pulling it. So um, very, very important it to is. remember that. And you're a lot stronger when you cut on the pull stroke as well, as yeah. you need a bite of mentioned before. <laughs> That's right. And then Silky also make the blades as flexible as possible, as you can see with this presenti here, to give you the best chance of not breaking that blade. So if you are one of those people that are used to using one of those push saws, and you use the saw and get it sort of stuck and you bend and sort of twist a little bit, it's going to give you some chances of going, oh shivers, I'm not supposed to do that, that's right. Pressure this way, this way, not that way. Yeah. Um, Nia, what happens if I was a guy that said I broke my silky saw on the first go? What does that mean? Well, let's hope you're not saying that you're a guy, but... Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that does happen from time to time. We'll get customers that, that say, um, you know, they've, they've used it and they've snapped it in the first 10 minutes of using it. And that's unfortunately because they're used to a push saw. So what they'll find is they'll push on the saw and without even thinking about it sometimes, but subconsciously they'll realize that they're not actually cutting. So they'll push harder and harder and faster and faster and push down on the saw far, harder as well and then bend it far enough and it'll snap. At the end of the day, it's metal. So metal will only go so far before it will break. Mm. Um, and the good thing about metal as well, it tells a story. So yes. when you snap it, you can um, re rejoin the pieces together and you mm. can see how it has... Um, the point of break. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, so you just join it up. But what happens, you need it if I snap my blade and I the top of it joins up but the bottom of it doesn't? Yes, so as Sinead said, if you do have a situation where you have broken a blade, grab the broken bit and, and fit it in perfectly with the other bit of the blade so you can see exactly where it is when it breaks. And normally it'll be on quite an angle, sometimes it's a right angle, sometimes it's sort of there, but you'll see the, the angle that the saw was on when it actually snapped. Now if, as Sinead said, it's only actually the tip that's touched and the rest of it's sort of twisted out like this, you'll know that when you were using that saw, you've got it jammed in a piece of wood and you've continued to push and the handle's probably twisted as you've put that forward pressure on, so you've actually split it between the teeth. And so it's sort of torn from the bottom of the teeth up to the top and it's completely snapped off just before it's hit the, um, the spine of the, the blade. So it's, it's really good in a way when you do break a blade, even though we never want to, but should it happen, to rejoin it, because then it helps you to understand what actually happened and why it broke in the first place. Yeah, exactly, mm. and especially if you're cutting longer branches as well, it's best to do a hinge cut as well, so you don't have that weight falling onto the blade causing you to accidentally make a mistake like that. But yeah. the chances are uh, very limited, limited when you use the silk saw correctly. Yeah, so this is the big thing, is using it correctly. So we've sort of touched on they're a pull saw only, not to put forward pressure. So particularly if you're used to using a non-Japanese style of hand saw, practice. Really think about it when you use it and really practice using the saw with pressure only towards yourself. The other neat thing with Silky is they design them so that you don't have to push hard on the teeth. Yeah. Just a tiny bit of, of energy as well as gravity is all that you need. So you're not putting excessive force. So really it makes it impossible to even break a blade if it gets pinched on your pull because you're not pulling that hard to cause yourself to accidentally <clears throat> over twist or over pull in that pulling direction. Mm -hmm. um, but as Sinead mentioned before, we have customers that might say they just broke it in the first time they used it, but then we'll have other ones that pose a sort of a different question. Yeah. So you need to, if I was a customer and I said I've used it about a hundred times yep. over the last course of the month, the exact same way as I always do, and it snapped, what does that mean? Okay, so this does <laughs> happen from time to time. Uh, and it comes back to understanding metal. So again, we mentioned before that most of the blades are very thin. They're designed to be very flexible. So what can happen, again, this is a customer that's used to using a push saw, not a pull saw. So the, as I say, because Japan makes these as durable as possible, you'll get away with putting forward pressure on the saw and you'll get away with bending it a couple of times. But the interesting thing with steel or metal is the more you bend it, you change the molecular structure, which is probably why you don't want to buy that one. <laughs> so the more you bend it, the more brittle it will become. 
Um, so you might have been using it the same way for a month and you've pushed it each time you've used it and you've got it pinched a couple of times and it's bent and it's been fine and you've thought nothing of it. But this time you've gone out and you've done exactly the same thing. It's pinched, you've done a little S-bend, but this time it snaps. Now that's because you've made that blade more brittle by bending it over and over again. So that's why it's great to understand that these saws will bend, but they won't bend forever. Eventually that metal will become brittle and you will snap it. So let's not bend it, let's not put pressure on the forward stroke, and then that's not going to happen. One of the other questions I asked at the very start was, can you snap a teeth tooth off a silky blade? And the answer was yes. So yes. how does that happen? Um, there's a couple of ways this can happen. One of them I am so guilty of, it's terrible. <laughs> uh, and this is using the saw as a hammer. And a what? lot of people go, <laughs> do that, they do that. <laughs> I mean, it's totally logical, I'm going to show you. <laughs> Not right, but it's logical. Okay. <laughs> so you've got your trusty presenti, and you're in a tree, and you've cut a branch here, and there's one like over here that you want, but you're too lazy to walk three feet to get it. So you get your saw, you throw it out, you hit the branch, and you pull it towards yourself. Now they're super, super sharp, so they dig so nicely into a branch and it makes it so easy and then it's over here and you can cut it, chuck it to the side and keep going. So that's how I use the saw as a hammer. Other people will use it by whacking out dead wood to hit the dead wood out of the tree because it tends to snap off in some trees. The problem is these are tiny, tiny little teeth. So you hit them on a hard material and they're also, most of them are hardened, which makes them more brittle. Um, so you have a chance of snapping one of those teeth if you do that. Now, as I say, I'm guilty of doing it. So if I <laughs> pop a tooth on my saw, I know what I've done. I know it's my fault and I'm not going to be complaining because I chose to be lazy and hit those branches. But if you don't want to lose teeth, don't hit branches with them. <laughs> as I need it. <laughs> and that's an example of not what to do with a silky saw. Yeah. <laughs> but another um, one that we have come across is finding hard materials in a tree. So I was mm. reading a arborist post the other day and they were saying that they have found nails and screws yeah. and even horseshoes. Bottle caps. Bottle caps, yeah, yeah. it was um, pretty... Crazy. Yeah, pretty crazy, pretty <laughs> insane. So that's another way you can um, snap a tooth out of it because like mm. they were saying, tiny, 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 teeny, mm. with big, bitty, bitty triangles <laughs> in a blade. Yeah, caught on something hard and you rip it and then yes, that will cause it to make pop a tooth out. Yeah, so that's it. And it sounds crazy, but these things do grow into a tree. You know, it might have got stuck in a split or something and the tree's grown over it. So you, you're not aware that it's there, it just you can hit it as you're just pruning happen. a tree, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but at least then you understand why that's happened. Now, that's actual foreign material which Sinead's talked about, but you also need to be conscious of um, hard wood. So if you're cutting an iron bark tree, that's very hard wood, and if you're going gung-ho, just ripping through it, you could also have a chance of chipping a tooth, because if it's hitting hard, sort of sharp surfaces, one of those teeth might pop as well. And then the other thing is, um, we're going to throw a shot up now of the, one of the uh, logs that we cut on the survival course that we did. Now, we were trying out the Katana Boy, um, and you know the Katana Boy doesn't have hardened teeth, so you've got a bit more chance of this saw surviving, cutting this kind of material. But this was a very dead, very dirty piece of, um, piece of wood, and it had quite thick bark, so that bark allows all that grit and gravel to actually get caught in there, so when you're cutting it, your teeth are coming in contact with that. So one, it's probably going to blunt in it quite quickly. Um, and also you've got a chance of chipping teeth because if they hit a little rock and you're going quite quickly, it could potentially make a tooth chip. Now, none of this is a reflection on the, the quality. These are, as I say, as good as quality can get with hand saws. They are the best. But the reality is, as Sinead said, their little tiny triangular teeth um, made out of metal. So you hit them hard enough, you hit them on the right angle and you will cause them to break. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So as long as you look after your blade, look at, make mm. sure that you use it correctly, mm. it will last you an incredibly long time. We had a lady change her blade after 14 years. And yeah. So uh, we want you to have that same experience. We want you, your blade to last 14 years. Mm. But you have to look after it. It is a high quality tool. Just like a kitchen knife, like you need was saying, you drop it, misuse it, it will break. Yeah, so understanding why they break, I think, is the key to not breaking blades. Yes. So I think it's very, very important to understand yourself, what you are like with using tools, 
what you're going to actually be um, cutting, how you're going to be transporting that item to pick the right saw for you. Because as you know from our videos or even from you know catalogs and things, Silky have a huge range and as we mentioned earlier they make some thicker blades. Yep. So if you, you need to sort of go, okay what am I going to do, how am I going to use it and then pick the right saw for you and then you're not going to come to the problem of broken blades. Exactly. Yeah. So all of this comes back to balance and that's what Silky have just ticked the box big time with. They balance um, weight, they balance efficiency, speed, with quality, with longevity of this product. They're not indestructible, but if you look after them and you use them properly, they will last you an absolute lifetime. I was at one yes. garden show once and one of the other store holders that also sold hand saws um, came up to us at the end of the day and he said, oh, one of your customers came up to us and they showed us the saw that they purchased and I said to them, oh, you just brought yourself a family, family heirloom. And I thought, that's so fantastic, <laughs> but so true. If you look after it, it could in fact be a family heirloom because it would last that long. But to recap and have this totally, totally clear, easy to understand how to prevent breaking blades and chipping teeth and bending and twisting your saw is... Number one, you have to pick the right saw for you first. So you can ask us if you aren't sure, um, email us, contact us via social media, or you can put a comment below. We're more than happy to help. Yeah, we love the comments. <laughs> okay, number two, <laughs> practice. Yes. Practice using your saw. Don't just go crazy out there and decide you're gonna cut all your firewood up to begin with without thinking and a rush. Go out, use the saw, use no, no weight whatsoever when you cut with it and see how it cuts. Put pressure a little bit on the forward and see how it doesn't cut. Play with it, feel how it actually works so that you can be confident that you know how to use that properly and you're not gonna pinch and bend that blade. Yes, and three, it's the plan as well. So plan on what you're going to cut beforehand. So mm. as you were saying, we do have quite a few tools. So as long as you plan for what you're wanting to do, we can find the correct saw for you and it will do the job super easy, super effortless, and... And plan how you're going to cut what you're cutting too. Look yes. at it and determine whether it's going to pinch that blade and whether the blade has potential for twisting when it's halfway through the cut. So look at what you're cutting before you go and actually start cutting it. Yes. <laughs> and number four, I'm doing my fingers right today. Number four, do not lend it to your friends. Don't share it. Tell them to go buy their own. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that is all from us today. We mm. hope that has been a little bit understandable for you. But thanks for watching and we hope you enjoy the rest of the week. Yes. And please, favour, we need to uh, reach a thousand subscribers to do some cool stuff to our videos. So please, could you subscribe if you haven't? Just there's a little button down, well, a little red boxy thing just down there, there Chanel, I think, to the left. Uh, click on that or somewhere else there's words, but we would love you to subscribe and that will help us do some cool stuff to our video. Yeah. <laughs> but stay tuned for next week because we're inviting eight boys and they're stealing our show next week. So stay tuned. See you.